Hey, what's up guys? Sir Aminon here and welcome to another video. So this is going to be something a little bit different. It's going to be an overview of the Flunderies archetype from Burst of Destiny. And I don't normally make, you know, overviews or reviews of OCG releases uh, on the channel. It's not really my thing. Um, but I figured I'd do it because uh, I actually got a notification on Twitter last night from none other than Mr. Alex Simo, uh, who messaged me with the uh, artwork the teaser for this little guy right here. Uh, obviously, being a penguin enthusiast, I felt contractually obligated to um, take an interest in whatever card slash deck this would end up being, and here we are. So I know many of you guys already read the cards, but for those of you guys who haven't, uh, let's go over them. I'll just say kind of my initial impressions, and then I'll go over some of the uh, combos and some of the cards that the deck can play towards the end. So stick around if you want to see those. Um, but I will say that I have mixed feelings towards this deck, um, because I think the overall mechanics and the gimmick are pretty cool, and I love their artwork, but um, I have a feeling it's going to kind of be the next iteration of Draco, uh, both in terms of deck building and community reception, which is a bit unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it goes. So we'll start off actually with the smaller uh, winged beasts, because uh, this is a winged beast archetype, if you guys don't know, um, that revolves kind of around the just normal summon or tribute summon mechanic. And the smaller ones are the ones to start off with here, I feel, because um, they're the starters. Uh, so all the level ones have uh, similar second and third effects, where if they would leave the field, uh, they get banished instead. And if a winged beast no or monster is normal summoned to your field while this card is banished, you can add them back to your hand. So uh, they basically have just native synergy because the entire mechanic revolves around just normal summoning the winged beasts, right? And because, you know, you're trying to tribute summon these guys away, uh, they just get added right back to your hand. Uh, so Robin is the one that lets you rota for a level 4 or lower winged beast. And then also the level 1s have the same effect in common where after they perform their normal summon effect, you get to also perform an additional normal summon for a winged beast. Um, so that is kind of just the general gameplay mechanic. So this one rotas for a level 4 or lower winged beast from deck to hand. Uh, this is Eagle, which does it the same thing for a level 7 or higher winged beast. And then we have Stritch or Ostrich, which allows you to basically de-throw any card in either player's graveyard. Um, and then we have uh, Toucan or Tokan, uh, which lets you target a banished Flunderies card and add it to your hand. Um, so that has synergy, of course, with the Ostrich, but also with the Field Spell, which we'll get to in a bit. So these are kind of the smaller playmaker ones, um, which let you get some of your engine pieces into rotation, uh, either directly from your deck to your hand or kind of circumventing that by banishing them and then getting them back uh, instead. Um, and then we have the bigger boss monsters. We got the Almighty Emperor Penguin or the M-Pen. Um, there's actually four Emperor Penguins in this picture, uh, but I digress. So basically, if this card is tribute summoned, you can add a Flunderies Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand, and then you get to immediately after it resolves, normal summon any monster, not just winged beasts. Um, additionally, while it's on the field, it's a it's a floodgate, which makes me very sad that it's a floodgate. Uh, but basically, it's a Majesty's Fiend for any special summon monsters your opponent controls in attack position, so it completely shuts off link monsters, um, or just uh, deters any aggressive pushes because your opponent will have to just summon everything in defense um, otherwise. So, you know, it's just a big deterrent. And additionally, if it battles an opponent's monster, you can, during damage calculation, banish a card from your hand and then cut that opponent's monster's stats in half until the end of the turn, which is not really super relevant, but you can banish your smaller ones and then eventually get them back later. So, I mean, this effect probably won't come up, but it's, it's there. Then we have Snowl or Snow Owl. Which, once per turn, if you control this tribute summon card, you can, can perform three normal summons in one turn. Uh, so this is basically just chain summoning for the deck, which is, like, fine. Um, when this card is tribute summoned, or sorry, while this tribute summoned monster is on the field, uh, you go ahead and uh, give your monsters uh, piercing damage. And additionally, during your opponent's turn, as a quick effect, you can banish a card from your hand to Book of Eclipse all your opponent's special summon monsters. So it's, like, a big UCT as well. Um, so this is like a big payoff boss monster uh, for certain combo heavy matchups. So yeah, these two cards are probably just going to be one of those, obviously, because um, you don't really want to hard draw them. You just want to search them off of your uh, eagle and then summon them via uh, various effects, whether it be the small ones or otherwise, which there's other ways to do that. And we'll get to that right now. So we have the Field Spell, which allows you to, during your main phase, reveal any level 1 Flunderies monster in your hand. You can banish any Flunderies card with a different name from your deck, and then immediately normal summon the revealed monster. Um, so this pairs extremely well with the Toucan, because you can uh, banish any of the spells or traps, and then add them back. Or you can do the same for monsters if you just need more bodies. Um, so yeah, definitely super, super solid card. Uh, and then we also have the uh, Unknown Wind, which is a continuous spell. Oh, sorry, I 
completely glossed over the second effect of the field spell right there. But if your opponent normal summons a monster, you can also do the same for a Flunderese. So um, that's kind of ways to get more value. As I mentioned before, there's ways to kind of uh, tribute summon and just normal summon in general. Uh, the Flunderese is on your opponent's turn and get additional value. And then we have the Unknown Wind, which is a continuous spell that honestly feels more like Monarch support than anything, uh, but basically allows you to circumvent the Tribute Summon mechanic by allowing you to send a monster you control and any card your opponent controls to the graveyard instead of tributing. Uh, obviously, it doesn't target. It can be any card, so it can like out Floodgates. It can out any like problematic boss monster. It's basically just like a Mega Kaiju or like a Stormforth. So yeah, that this card is pretty pretty wild when you pair it up with the fact that you can tribute summon on your opponent's turn via any of the level ones or the field spell or this trap right here which we'll get to um, and additionally you can uh during your main phase uh, basically recycle back two of your wing beasts um to draw the same number of cards which probably won't come up but it's nice just to have there as a bonus and then we have the traps which are pretty crazy so we have the city of dreams which first off lets you during the main phase grant you an additional normal summon of a level four or lower lings beast monster um so mostly the level one flender reasons and then you can also if you tribute summon a level seven or higher monster while this card's in your graveyard you can banish it from your grave and then book of eclipse all your opponent's monsters to face on defense and it's not even restricted to just special summon ones unlike the uh the snow owl so yeah, this one obviously just has native synergy if you pair it with your um, your Robin, which you'll get back pretty much every single turn because of its you know, second and third effects. So you get value off of this, you get value off your Eagle, you get value off of whatever you search, and then you can trigger immediately this effect to just go ahead and book all your opponent's monsters. It's just really, really strong. Uh, and then you have, or you have the counter trap, which is the Scary Sea. And this allows you to basically... Um, Negate the special summon of one of your opponent's monsters as long as you control a face of tribute summon monster and no special summon monsters. Uh, and then your opponent is unable to special summon monsters for the rest of the turn. Um, they can't conduct three normal summons or sets this turn, so I mean, you obviously wouldn't want this in the mirror match because uh, for one, it wouldn't be live, but for another, uh, you'd be helping your opponent. Um, but yeah, you negate the summon and then you return it back to the hand and then they just can't special summon that turn. So very, very fun and interactive gameplay. I also forgot to mention, by the way, with the level ones is that um, if you use either of the uh, first or the third effects, uh, you can't special summon for the turn. But I mean, that's not really that big of a deal. If you could, you could just go straight up into Zeus plays all the time. Um, so I guess that's a some balancing but yeah these cards look really really strong they just have a massive advantage engine they have super good payoffs in a massive book of eclipse you have like a basically majesty's fiend and you have insanely strong traps to back everything up uh, i should also mention here that they have a pot of greed as well um and this is not just for the deck but it's for any winged beast so all you Lyrolusk, uh blackwing raid raptor harpy players uh, rejoice uh, you, you get a free Pot of Greed. I think in this deck, actually, it's probably better to play stuff like Pot of Extravagance um, because you don't really need your extra deck. And this deck requires, or this card requires a little bit more setup, whereas Extravagance, you can just get to the cards you need if you don't have them already. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and showcase some of the, the combos. Um, so a lot of them are actually just going to be one card combos involving this card, which is the Robin. Uh, this is your major starter. Um, I mean, there's not really a direct way to search it outright, uh, but you can uh, definitely get to it pretty easily with cards like Extravagance. You can play Pot of Duality in this deck, which is, you know, very reminiscent of Draker, right? Uh, but anyways, this is a one-card combo that lets you get to a lot of different end boards depending on what you want to do based on the matchup. So we just start things off. So we're going to normal summon the Robin, use the effect. We add a level 4 or lower winged beast. It can also add itself if you want to. So, if, like, say you have some of your other combo pieces, you can just get a follow-up for next turn if you really want to. I mean, it adds itself back normally, but um, that's kind of something to note, is that they can actually add themselves. Uh, so, you can also add the Eagle, if you're just going for the one-card combo here. Then immediately normal summon it, thanks to the Robin, of course. And then Eagle's effect on summon lets you add the best monster in the entire deck, uh, because it's a Penguin, not because it's a Floodgate. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Tribute Summon it, because of course, again, it bestows an additional normal summon. So we're just going to Tribute Summon these, uh, they get banished of course, and then we can trigger in sequence the Penguin and then the two banished Flunderizes, adding them back to the hand and then getting our search for our Speller Trap. And then if we don't have anything, we can just go for either the Counter Trap, which is you know pretty strong in its own right, because it's basically just a sub or Special Summon Floodgate, um, basically like Vanity's Emptiness, if you will. Or you have more interesting options if you go for the City of Dreams, which is cool. So this card allows you to, on your opponent's turn, you can go and say normal summon your Robin. 
And then you can use Robin's effect. You can grab a search, maybe for like a token or toucan, because uh, you can use it to eventually get back your City of Dreams uh, since it banishes itself. So this can get this back, which is cool. Uh, and then you can normal summon the eagle, thanks to the robin, of course. And then eagle effect can search for a multitude of things. So we have the snow owl, of course, which is archetypal. We have the rise of the mega monarch, which has been bought out <laughs> since I checked this morning. Um, but yeah, this card's pretty crazy. So you can tribute summon this card by tributing one tribute summon monster. So you can tribute away your penguin if you want to. Um, but if it's tribute summoned, you can target a card on the field and in either player's graveyard. And also, uh, if this card was tribute summoned by tributing a wind monster, which the eagle happens to be, or the penguin here in this case, uh, you can target an additional card in the field and place the first targets on top of the deck in any order. And also after that, you can return the additional target of any to the hand. So what's cool about this is that um, you can, since the conjunction, or conjunction there is also, uh, you can actually just tribute these away and then target your own uh, City of Dreams if there's no, you know, target in the graveyard. Um, since, you know, if your opponent doesn't have anything in the grave for you to banish and you want to remove something on their field, you still have the option to do so. Because you can actually chain the City of Dreams in grave effect to that, and everything will still resolve normally. So um, that's just a pretty nice interaction there to have up your sleeve. Um, there's also Apex Avion, which I shouldn't really have to go over that much. But uh, let's say you go for the Ryza here. You can trigger the Ryza and then just basically spin a bunch of cards. You can also chain your City of Dreams to Book of Eclipse everything if you want to. And then you can also trigger your Robin and your uh, Eagle to add themselves back. And you have follow-up plays for next turn. So this is pretty crazy. Uh, you got a lot of really, really powerful stuff in rotation. You have massive interruptions in a Book of Eclipse as well as, you know, just spinning stuff back and then you have also just a floodgate in the form of your penguin so off of the one card you have a lot of really powerful setup also you can choose instead of going for the toucan you can actually go for dd crow off of your eagle there or sorry not the eagle the, the robin because uh crow happens to be a valid search target for this so if you want a hand trap there you go <laughs> so yeah those are some things to just uh, kind of keep in mind so i'm going to show off also some more stuff that you can do if you want to uh, expand on the combos a little bit. So this is going to be Robin plus either Eagle or the Toucan because you just search the other one that you're missing off the Robin initially because you don't actually have to summon the one that you search. So just keep that one in mind. And also I'm going to do this in a bit of a different order just to show that you can sequence these uh, in various ways. So we can start with uh, the Eagle first and then normal summon the Robin uh, if we wanted to do it this way. Um, so that's kind of something to uh, consider here. But we grab our penguin, we can go for the robin, and then robin will grab us our toucan. And then we can go and just immediately go for our good old penguin, uh, tributing, or triggering everything in sequence. I forgot to click declare on the penguin, but you're obviously going to use the effect there. Uh, those get added back, and then you add your field spell here in this case. So because we have access to the toucan, uh, we can actually you know, synergize these two cards really nicely since, of course, as we mentioned, uh, this can fetch anything from your uh, deck, basically. It doesn't have to just be monsters. So we can reveal the Toucan, we can go for the City of Dreams, then we can also summon the Toucan, and then add back our City of Dreams and sit in it. So we can do the same plays as before, because you'll notice we have the exact same cards in the hand, just with, you know, two extra cards. Um, but what we can do here is a pretty silly combo uh, where we go for Robin off of the City of Dreams and then Robin's effect is going to trigger. That's going to grab us, you know, DD Crow or whatever. You could grab the other, uh, the Ostrich, um, the level one Flunderies if you want to. Um, and well, you'll see why in just a bit. Uh, but we can go for the uh, Eagle here as well, which will allow us to add a copy of Earthbound Immortal, Rivakocha Raska. So this card allows you to um, basically of course, have the normal Earthbound Immortal effects where they blow themselves up if you don't have a Field Spell, but hey, you search a Field Spell in your combo, so it's nice. Um, but once you normal summon it, you can target one to three cards you control, but not more than your opponent has in the hand. You shuffle them into the deck, and then you discard the same number of random cards from your opponent's hand, uh, or as many as possible, and if you do, this card gains a thousand attack. So you can hand loop for three, basically, with this combo, which is pretty silly. So the reason why you might want to add Ostrich instead of the DD Crow is that it gets you another body, so you have more free stuff to shuffle away. But um, this is like another interruption just in case your opponent has stuff that uh, you ultimately end up pitching that you don't want there. <laughs> um, so this kind of is like a fail safe against the fact that this kind of randomly discards the opponent's cards. So I think that's pretty cool. It also allows you to make it so that you don't have to use your ostrich because ostrich, remember, is a DD crow before you get to uh, grant yourself an additional normal summon. So if you have to banish your own uh, City of Dreams, it's not the most ideal 
Um, but here, this way, you still get the Book of Eclipse effect as well. So you can go like Chainlink 1, Weaver Coach of Raska, Chainlink 2, City of Dreams, Chainlink 3, your small birds there in the banished pile so they get to add themselves back. So you, again, you have guaranteed place for next turn. And then everything resolves, your opponent's entire board gets booked, and then you get to go ahead and shuffle everything back. Um, and so the uh, Toucan will get banished there because, of course, you know, its own condition. So yeah, that is pretty crazy. Um, that, that, that's pretty wild, considering you can do all of that off of one or two cards. Um, other cards to consider here is the Monarchs Erupt, if you want to play an extra deck-less version of the deck. Um, I already mentioned Extravagance and Duality. Uh, DD Crow has come up here. Uh, you can play stuff like Dimensional Shifter, because you, know, you don't really care too much about your stuff getting banished, since you, know, you have ways to recur them, like many times over. You could play Harpy's Feather Storm, which I think is better than Monarchs Erupt, because it doesn't lose uh, to back row removal. Uh, as badly. Uh, you just play a whole slew of floodgates or hand traps. Um, and that's kind of why I think people really, really have a distaste for this deck because it really does feel a lot like Draco in those respects. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to show all these combos off. I don't normally do this kind of stuff, but if you want me to do these kinds of things more often, just let me know. Um, I guess it's probably good for me because I have a bad habit of not looking at OCG archetypes very much. Um, this being an exception, of course, because we got a penguin here. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of this video. Uh, Obviously, leave any feedback or comments, but yeah, let's just go ahead and wrap it up. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more informative and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on all social media platforms or support me with the links in the description as usual. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.